Acts 27, I want to start at verse 27. Let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. Acts 27, verse 27. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, <clears throat> they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let it when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were all we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen sixteen souls, three hundred two hundred and seventy six souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they should, which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. I want to um, take my text or my, actually, I guess my title from verse 33. While the day was coming on, I want, to, I want to preach to you about the day is coming on. Father, we're thankful. We're grateful. We love you. Our hearts are full when we think of God's goodness. The privilege that we have to worship you. The privilege that we have to be with God's people. Father, I pray that you'd bless us this morning in the house of the Lord. May the word of God find space in us. Take root in us. Bring forth fruit in our life. Anoint me, Lord, that I'd be able to speak as the oracles of God. And we'll give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The day is coming on. I intend to preach an allegorical message this morning. And this is not my ordinary way of preaching. It's a little difficult for me. A lot of preachers preach this way on a regular basis, but this is an odd way for me to preach an allegorical message. My normal custom is to preach an expository message or a topical message, mainly expository. But I feel like that the Lord pointed this out to me for a purpose. I want you to watch the progression in my story. In verse 27, my text begins at midnight, and it ends at daybreak. Verse 27, it was about midnight. In verse uh, 29, they wished for the day. 
in verse 33. While the day was coming on. And verse 39. When it was day. We started at midnight. We wished for the day. The day was coming on. It was day. That's the progression in my story. That's my allegory. And I expect that some of you sitting here in this assembly have already found yourself in my text. At midnight, wishing for the day, or maybe waiting for the day. Some of you may be in the day, but we're somewhere In that scheme. And no doubt that all of us can remember times that we were in the storm at midnight. Wishing for the day. And then seeing signs that the day was coming on. And finally, the day arrived. Eventually, That was the breaking of the dawn. So the progression that I have described for you is, listen, it's always true in the life of the Christian. Darkness always gives way to the dawn. The storm always gives way to serenity. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So the progression that I have read to you in my text is always true of the life of the Christian. That's not always true of the life of the person that's not a Christian. But I can assure you this progression is always true of the life of the Christian. Midnight, wishing for the day. The day coming on, and it was day. Hallelujah. This is the progression of the Christian life. In my text, Paul is on his way to Rome as a prisoner on board a ship. And this ship has been battered by a terrible tempest for 14 long days. It has been many days. Since these travelers have seen the sun or the stars, no break in the clouds, no break in the storm, 14 days of terror on the sea in complete darkness, no sun, no stars. And this, uh, these people on board this ship have no means of navigation. And even if they did have means of navigation... Their ship is caught in the grip of a horribly strong storm. So the darkness and the tempest has brought despair to all hearts on board the ship. Verse 20 says, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. It's midnight. It's dark. There's a terrible tempest upon us. And all hope is gone that we should be saved. Have you been there? Have you been there when in the tempest and in the darkness you despaired? Maybe you're there now. You run out of hope. You run out of answers. Inside there's a feeling of despair that you just can't shake. And the situation is too big for you. And you wonder if it's too big for God. And you're just in despair over the circumstances of life. Have you accepted the darkness and the storm as the end of the story? Is this the way life must be? Is it all darkness and gloom? Will the sun never shine again? Have we accepted this as the way life must be always? This is what happened to these people, that all hope was gone, their hearts 
were full of despair. But on board that ship, there was a man by the name of Paul. And he cried out to God until he got an answer. And God assured him, listen to me, God assured him that the sun had not gone out. That somewhere above the tempest, the light was still shining. The sun had not gone out. It was still burning in the heavens. Somewhere ahead, the day will break. Somewhere ahead, the storm will end. And Paul said, an angel of the Lord stood by me this night. And he assured me that no life would be lost on board this ship. This man heard from God in the midst of the storm. And he spoke his faith to those people on board that ship, assuring them that the God that he belonged to, this God had promised him, there would ultimately be no loss of life. And by now, these sailors and travelers had learned that Paul had a connection with heaven. There had been a time they didn't believe him. That's why they're in this storm. They didn't believe him. When he told them that this storm's going, this, this voyage is going to be with much hurt and, and warned them about leaving the safe havens. And they didn't believe him. They believed the owner of the ship more than Paul. But now then they have learned this man knows what he's talking about. He has an audience with God and they understood that God had spoken hope to this group of people on board this ship. Hallelujah. And so now, instead of losing hope, they are wishing for the day. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. At one point, all hope was gone. But now they are wishing for the day. Praise God. God has spoken. The man of God has heard from God. And they are wishing for the day. Praise God. They are looking now for a new dawn. We need people like Paul, don't we? We need people like Paul who can hear God over the roar of the storm. Did you hear me? I said we need people like Paul who can hear God over the roar of the storm. This man had an ear tuned to heaven. He heard God over the roar of the storm. Hallelujah. God spoke in the midst of that storm. We need somebody who speaks faith when other people are speaking fear. The other people on board this ship had lost hope. They were all talking fear. But here's a man talking faith. Here's a man that's heard from God. Here's a man that's got an ear that he heard God over the roar of the storm. And he's spreading faith to the people on board this ship. God has spoken. We're not going to die. We're going to live. My, this, this, this kind of man changes things all over that ship, changes attitudes, changes outlook all over that ship. This man with faith, this man that's heard from God, changes attitudes all over that ship. I've heard from God. I know God has listened to our prayers. Hallelujah. And all over that ship, people begin to wish for the day. They begin to get hope in their hearts because somebody heard from God in the midst of the storm. Somebody that encourages those caught in the storm to dare to believe We will survive to see the day. We will survive to see the sunshine again. It was David that said in Psalm chapter 27 and verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Brother, uh, we will faint unless we believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. Praise God. Wait on the Lord. 
Be of good courage. Don't lose your courage. Don't let fear control you. Let faith take hold in your heart. Hear from God and and spread the good news. God has heard our prayers. He knows where we're at. He knows we're in the storm, but He's in control of the storm. And the sun is shining above the clouds, and God has assured us we're going to survive to see the sun shine again. My... Lord, help us to hear you over the roar of the storm. The ten spies came back from Canaan. They observed, the twelve spies all observed the same thing. Ten of them come back and said, we can't take that land. There's too many obstacles out there. And two of them come back and said, we are well able to take that land. God is for us. God has promised us this land. We are well able to take this land. Ten against two. Understand that the hearts of people are often inclined to receive bad news. And they received the bad news. And they rejected the faith of the Caleb and Joshua. But listen, I'm preaching to you this morning. To try to get you to understand that the sun is shining somewhere. In the midst of your storm, the sun is still shining. God is still listening to our prayers. God is still speaking in the storm. And God's still in control of the storm. The ten spies discourage the hearts of their brethren. We don't want to discourage the hearts of our brethren. Hey, listen. When people are in the midst of the storm, don't speak despair. Don't tell them there's no hope. Tell them there's a God in heaven who hears and answers prayer. Tell them that the sun is shining. Tell them that God still listens to the cries of His children. Tell them that God's almighty. Tell them that God's in control of the storm. Let them know there's hope. There will be a new dawn in their life. Y'all, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. After prolonged darkness, they started seeing signs of daybreak. Verse 33 says, while the day was coming on. Woo! Hallelujah. While the day was coming on. Red streaks in the heavens. Golden rays breaking through. Praise God. While the day was coming on, darkness began to flee. They're praying for the daybreak and looking for signs of the dawn. And I want to tell you this morning, don't give up in the deep darkness. Because as the song says, the darkest hour is just before dawn. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give up in the darkest hour when the sun's just about to peep over the horizon. But God is on the throne. Hallelujah. Praise God. And He has never forsaken His own. And and the sun is a-shining somewhere. And it's going to break in your life. The dawn will soon break in your life as well. In our scheme of marking time, we speak of the morning and the evening in that order. In our history, outside of Christ, our life outside of Christ, is a life full of disappointments and empty promises. We are accustomed to the day turning into night, morning into evening. But God marks time differently. He speaks of the evening and the morning. He starts with the evening. He ends with the morning. The evening and the morning were the first day. So as a Christian, We learn that life moves in a different direction. When we come to Jesus, life begins to move in a different direction. Not from morning to evening, but from evening to morning. We move from the night to the day. 
From the darkness to the daylight, we have been brought out of darkness into marvelous light. For the unbeliever, life ends in death. For the believer, death ends in life. We go different directions. For the unbeliever, eternal darkness reigns in his eternal home. But for the believer, eternal day reigns in his eternal home. Never no night. Never no darkness. Jesus is the light of that place. And the sun never sets. For the believer, eternal day reigns in his eternal home. For the unbeliever, his pleasure turns into eternal pain. But for the believer, his pain turns into eternal pleasure. So, I want to encourage you. Hold on, saints. Keep looking for the morning. The day will dawn. The shadows will flee away. There will be a new dawn in your day just down the road. And what the Bible encourages us to do is not to get ready for the darkness, but to get ready for the day. This is what Paul says in Romans chapter 13. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Hallelujah. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Brother, the night is far spent. The devil has had his day. In our history, in our personal lives, we have, we have been in the storm. We may be in the storm right now. Darkness may surround us. We may be traveling in the darkness this very morning. But I can assure you that the night is far spent. The day is at hand. And the Lord will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Did you hear that? Shortly the Bible says, God promised the Romans that, 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 that the Lord will bruise Satan under your feet shortly, he said. It's not going to be long until Jesus hears and answers prayer. Thundering above the storm is the voice of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can boldly say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me because God is our helper. Hallelujah. Oh, the day broke. Those people who hadn't seen the sun nor the stars... In many days, the day broke. Hallelujah. They all made it safe to land. Counted them. 276 souls safe on the land. Because God promised in the midst of the storm, nobody's going to be lost in this storm. And I'm telling you, brother, it can be that way in our storm as well. If we will be like Paul and go to God in the midst of the storm and listen for the voice of God in the midst of the storm, nobody be lost. This was the will of God for them. This is the will of God for us, that in the midst of our storm, in the time of our darkness, nobody be lost. God is still on the throne. And He still cares for His own. And God still hears and answers prayer. Praise God. Ah, Hallelujah. Y'all, I, I don't know. That's not my ordinary way of preaching. But that's what the Lord laid on my heart. I, I got up January the 1st and opened my Bible. And this is where I was reading in my, my regular Bible reading, Acts 27. I saw it, never saw it before in my life. I saw it. God pointed out to me. Randy Webb was at my house. I went downstairs and said, Randy, I will show you what the Lord showed me. He said, that's for me. That's for me. But it may be for you too. Midnight. 
wishing for the day. The day coming on. It is day. That's the way we're going. That's where we're headed. In the darkness, we're headed for the day. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Judy, I want you to come to the piano. I want us to stand together this morning. You know, this is one of my favorite passages. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. God hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The devil roars. He howls. He threatens. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I'm telling you, there will be a new day. The dawn is just ahead. Hold on to that nail-scarred hand. Let's come to this altar and see if we can't hear the voice of God above the roar of the storm. You're not going to perish. You're going to live. Come on.